hey, my name is Paul. I'm a filmmaker and also created a user group about a year ago for the Blackmagic cinema camera when that hit the streets. Wasn't quite what I needed at the time, but when the pocket came around, I went for it. So I took an early version of that to New York City and pulled together well under an hour of footage, but edited that into a seven-minute film that I posted a few days ago. And a lot of people have watched it, but one of the things that came up was um, it would be interesting to see a split screen of literally what came right off of the SD card without any adjustments or looks applied, and then the finished product that was seen before on the right. So that's what we're going to do. And I figured instead of writing a blog post for a blog that doesn't exist yet, I'm still trying to pull together this focus pulling family. Um, it'd probably be faster to just talk while we're looking, and that might even be a better way to see things instead of just cross-referencing. So here we go. We start out in Grand Central Terminal, and there's these cool escalators off to the side that ended up doubling as uh, crane shots. Cheap and easy. But the main thing to see here is orbs. So if you look in the background on the left, you'll see a flash once and then twice. And on the back wall, those are supposed to be Apple logos. But what happens is all the highlights, they get blown out in these really flat disks. And so, you know, the word is that we have to send in the early pockets um, back to Blackmagic for calibration, which I'm not looking forward to. The lens that I'm using for this whole thing is the Panasonic um, 12 to 35 millimeter uh, continuous f 2.8. And when you go down to 35 millimeters like this, you get really nice shallow focus, which surprised me, but also that power OIS is really important. I mean, it's, it's impressive how much it stabilizes the shots, like this one in particular. Here and in the next couple, I did add Adobe Warp Stabilizer. Um, I mean, I went down from the default of 50 down to 10 for a more natural look, but, you know, that came in handy. But overall, I think compared to a lot of the Hyper Prime footage that we've seen, um, I think it's, it ends up being kind of the Achilles heel of the Blackmagic Pocket if you don't stabilize it right because it's just you know headache inducing sometimes heading now into the museum of modern art you really see the value of the form factor of the black magic pocket cinema camera because it's um, so discreet i mean this is a place where if you pulled out a full video camera i mean it just wouldn't fly that was some jackson pollock and then here we have a picasso sculpture more warp um, a soundings exhibit, the first time they had a full curated sound art exhibit. But you have these really wonderful atrium spaces. This is a really long shot um, in the main atrium, so I broke it up with these people playing with their cell phones, kind of a nice contrast jump cut. And, and coming back to the shot, um, it just keeps going and going. There's quite a few floors in that. But then cutting back to this, uh, this kid was just amazing. Those are jump cuts as opposed to frame drops, though I got plenty of those that you're not seeing. But um, finally coming back to the atrium again, I threw in a few flashes of my favorite painter, Ivan Albright. And once we get to the bottom, we go back to the soundings exhibit. And with this split screen, you can really see how hard it is to nail white balance, but then how much you can also fix it in post because there's all that latitude in the Blackmagic footage. But back outside, we're at Zuccotti Park here, and that was the center of the Occupy movement. And there actually are some stragglers still there making some noise. I spent a lot of time documenting them around the world, and um, it's a kind of an experimental documentary that I'm going to pull together someday. But here's some interesting additive dissolve jump cuts. I couldn't find any other way. But look at those headlights on the cars, and then look at those street lights, right? White orbs. It was Labor Day, and now in Times Square, um, this was just brought in on the bed of a truck, but this sculpture in tribute to um, union workers. I liked the, the kind of monochrome contrast with shallow focus against all of the encroaching bright lights. Uh, but overall, it was a pleasant surprise how light sensitive the super 16 millimeter sensor is. Uh, watch the statue's face, right? So this is the camera that turned the word orb into a verb. I got orbed again. At 35 mil, this is the uh, longest uh, end of the focal length. I mean, I'm really, I really liked the way that you can manipulate um, depth of field. And with that slow creep zooming out, you know, you see how stabilized it is. Um, 
I, for some reason, I really like this shot. But then the next, yeah, there's some more a, an aliasing on that truck grill, which I guess you just can't get away from no matter how good your sensor is. But that kind of surprised me. But heading back underground, uh, this is one of those, you know, New York moments you just can't plan, right? So this was sort of a guerrilla um, rave squad down on the subway. They had like a really loud, full-blown amp system and electronic music. But uh, I really like the way that I was able to track this um, handheld. You know, it's the kind of movement that would have been a lot more um, ornery to manage with a big rig. And back up on the streets, these were some guys, I don't know what they were telling us to do, but um, again, I really like the kind of character um, focus isolation that you can get from this camera. Another surprise. These guys were hilarious. I think they were fighting over turf, but watch. One of them's going to use their plastic torch to try and use their smartphone. That's great. And I like the rhythms of this guy. Bang. But only in New York here do you get a scene of a guy singing a ballad to stock tickers, right? And guess who's coming? Oh, look at that. So there he is, Naked Cowboy. I found out, I never knew about this guy, but I found out this is actually franchised Naked Cowboy. But yeah, he, he was very happy to be filmed. Apparently it costs this guy 500 bucks a day to use the trade name Naked Cowboy. There's an original guy who uh, ate a few less burritos, I think. But overall, I mean, you can see how the dynamic range of this camera, I mean, that's one of its great strengths, right? You're getting so much detail in the shadows, and then the highlights are supposed to deal well, but it's um, a work in progress. This was really cool, um, and it looks like I might have hired uh, a helicopter crew, but in reality, it's just uh, a part of the MTA transit system. You can just use your regular fare card and hop on an aerial tramway. But I love the way that this, without any warp, by the way, it's just these really nice, smooth, lateral pans of landscapes. Um, so next we're taking a ferry out to Governor's Island from the tip of Manhattan. And I remember really struggling with exposure here, um, especially there. But you can see with the split screen how it's just hard to get a consistent exposure outdoors. Um, I had a variable ND filter on, a light craft, but even with that, um, and trying to work with my zebras it's just a real challenge when we get to the island it's a really hazy environment and this is even more amplified by the very flat profile that the black magic captures video but it's also a good example of how film convert pro 2 can really make images shine and speaking of shining you can see in those specular highlights those orbs so that is a story yet to be finished Thanks so much for watching, listening, looking forward to seeing any comments you might have below, and also looking forward mostly to seeing what you shoot. So please send it in. The information on how to join the user group is on the screen, and I look forward to seeing you there.